You know what I like to say is that every single business is in the customer service business because if you don't have customers, you don't have a business. And this is exactly the type of thing that you're going to hear today on episode 395 of Business Brain for Wednesday, August 31st, 2022. <laughs> Welcome to, or back to, Business Brain here at businessbrain.show, the show for entrepreneurs and really anybody who wants to take the idea of using your business brain to anywhere in life. Sponsors for this episode include business capital providers at bcproviders.com slash SBS, where you can find out how you can get funded for as much as 250 grand in as little as 72 hours. We've got more details to share on that in a few minutes. For now, here, back here from Podcast Movement in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in lovely Lafayette, California, I am Shannon Jean. Welcome back. How was uh, Podcast Movement? Podcast Movement was fantastic. Uh, you know, it was interesting. We had the last episode was that crossover episode we did with GigGab. And yeah. prior to the episode, we were talking about how the three of us, mostly how the two of you, you and Paul Kent had met because Paul uh, it ran Macworld Expo for so many years. And obviously you were an That's exhibitor right. there and or maybe not. Obviously, you were an exhibitor there. Uh, and there, there, the, there was a question asked. And I, I don't I think it was Paul who asked it is, you know, is there he was sort of asking it in a in a pie in the sky way. Is there still value in attending conferences and the weird and I knew why he was asking it because I know Paul so well, but I've heard right. several other people ask that same question kind of. I mean, I we recorded that episode 12 hours before I got on a plane to uh, to go to Dallas yeah. in those right. 12 hours, maybe the 14 hours at the airport, you know, including the time I was there. I had like three other people ask me that question, like, is our conference is still worth it? And my as that sort of percolated in my head, I came up with a very snarky, but I think pointed response to that, which is by asking that question, you're telling me that conferences were something that was never of value to you because there's huge value and it's the same value. It's always been, you know, attending an industry conference allows me to dive into the echo chamber. And I know that can sound like a negative thing. Like, Oh, everybody there is into podcasting. Ooh, okay, great. Like, yeah, that, I mean, if I, if, if my life was like that, you know, 24, seven, 365, that would be terrible. I would get, I would not be productive, but to go and dive in for, you know, 72 hours into that echo chamber where there's like a common knowledge base among everyone. And then being able to have nuanced conversations about sort of the the nuts and bolts of what we do and why we do and all of that is super valuable. A, just to be sort of reinvigorated by what we do, but also to literally to learn things about how we do what we do and and That's and right. how to get better at what we do. Because guess what? It doesn't matter that I've been podcasting for 17 and a half years. Somebody that started six months ago knows something I don't know. And it's because they started six months ago. Yeah. And especially for remote workers, I mean, there's so many in other uh, benefits to the show, but even beso- you know, besides what you're talking about right now, but the, the fact that you can get together with other people like-minded and hang out and talk and pick up and, and the things come to the surface, you know, it's like you learn by osmosis yeah. and you connect with all these people. One of the comments I said last week on the uh, crossover show with, with um, Gig Gab was, I used it for training our employees. We always brought new employees to the trade show, pushed them out into the aisle, made them stop people talk and and learn how to interact with potential, you know, clients. And it was really powerful and great for team building. So may I think maybe people had, you know, trade show fatigue after a while. I can see that. I certainly did. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So, so having less of them and I, I know I had it too. And you'd go and we, you know, we've done shows uh, at least one, I think, or more on how to get the most out of a trade show. And so you, you really have to think about it. But what's uh, interesting you know, is I don't think any of the things I just said, I could be wrong about this, by the way. Uh, I don't think any of the things I just said about the value of what I experienced last week at podcast movement were things that I said in our pre COVID break uh, 
shows about the value of conferences. Because I was in trade mm-hmm. show fatigue mode. I, you know, like, yeah, maybe that, you're right. The, the, yeah. the, I know that I had very negative feelings about the whole enter the echo chamber part of conferences. And I now yeah. realize that every time I did it, even those times where I went into it thinking, man, like, ah, again, I got to do this. Like, it's the freaking echo chamber. I like they're all going to say the same thing. Everybody's going to be excited about the Mac or podcasting or whatever it is. It's like it gets old. Yeah. My gosh. But I realize now that that was still fuel for me. I just didn't notice it because I had done it so much. You know, there was the the, the frequency yeah. of it was too much. But it, it's well, we'll have to go really back. Good. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to, have to go back. Episode I'll go back and listen. It was the first first okay. one we ever did attending conferences, trade shows like a pro. And then 258, we actually did planning for trade show success. Uh, OK. And, and with some creative methods. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe you mentioned it there. I'm not sure you did. I, I'm going to listen. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to listen. Yeah yeah. 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 It's a good point. But, you know, it's it's great. You know. The podcast business is a creative business, right? It is. I mean, and yeah. uh, it's fantastic. I love it. I really enjoy it. It's one of the best parts of my week, I always say. I learn the most on these shows. Uh, it's terrific. Um, so if it's okay with you, what I'd like to talk about is the business of being a creative and and your role as a business owner, especially if you're in the creative arts, uh, you know, and you pick whatever it is, uh, graphic you know, graphic design, music, what, you know, we're, and I think it ties in well with the show we did. I was just um, going to say, this is nice for all our, our, our listeners who came over from GitGab. So yeah, I yeah, like this idea. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, and I know a little bit about this because, uh, I have a creative in my family. My daughter, Skylar is, uh, was a theater major in production and design, um, when she went to college. And I remember having this discussion with her and, and we've talked about this recently as well, the ROI of, you know, a college tuition, right? Oh, we did episode intro. 386. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we're both in the thick of it. I'm, I'm, we're, I think we're both kind of trending a couple more years. Uh, we'll be, be, you know, beyond the, the I, I'm not for, sure for that I will ever pay again. My son, it be partially yeah. because of the, the fact that his college jacked up the price and yeah. partially because of the fact that there's no housing for him to have. And partially because of the fact that, the department he was in at Reed College where he was going, uh, the computer science department lost all but one professor and then sort of reassembled the team at the last minute. And then somebody else dropped out. All those wow. things combined. So Price was one of them. Yeah. But, but n- arguably in the beginning, I felt like Price was the biggest one. I, I came around on that. And and the other things sort of sort of inform this decision, but but he is at at the very least taking this semester off, and we'll see what happens. But uh, that's yeah. great. Well, I don't know. Yeah, if, I mean, maybe cool. it's great. Like I never finished college, and things worked Could out be. for me. But I, I don't exactly. I, you know, I don't. I don't. I certainly don't mean to impose the crazy path in life I chose on anyone, especially not right. my children. <laughs> so yeah, it's all yeah. it's all different for them. It it's all out, different. But, yeah. Yeah. And and I can remember when we started having this discussion of uh, where, you know, Skylar was going to go to college and, you know, she had gotten some scholarships, a few different places uh, to per partial scholarships. Yes, of course. And, you know, going to New York was uh, very expensive. And I can remember looking at this going, OK, yeah, how, I don't know. I, I, I'm i really focused on the ROI of everything. I've got my business brain is, uh, you know, massive. And so. uh I can remember having a discussion with, with her after researching. I said, okay, I'm, I'm on board. I'll, I'll pay for this. Be, and, but this is the only reason why is yes, you're a creative person and you're in the arts, but deep down you're a manager. Ah. And I watched her in high school running the theater. She was the president of the theater, uh, you know, the group or whatever they called yeah. it back then. And, and she managed, and I can remember her coming home saying, you know, dad, my friends are telling me that I'm I'm bossy, and I said, uh, "Well, you're you're the boss. That's why and they yeah. don't like you telling them what to do." So, yes, let's let's talk about some tips on how to get your you know friends to do things for that they have to do as persuasion. Uh, but I felt that uh, because she was on that management path. That the investment would be would be worthwhile. Sure, and and, I, and so far it's proven. She's I, I was going to say, years, you, yeah, you have yeah. to. You you have to. I mean, any investment comes with a risk of not knowing 
for certain the outcome of it, or at least most investments. Yeah. I suppose there's some that are guaranteed, but th that's one of them that's not. And there are many that aren't. And we use our business brains to analyze those things. And I had to pull my business brain out a little bit of the financial side. I had to zoom out with my business brain. I don't want to say I had to turn my business brain off. I had to zoom my business brain out when looking at the value of a college education, uh, you know, over the summer when I sort of had to had to stare down this this tuition hike. And uh, but it, anyway, at this point, I don't know what's going to yeah. happen with. Yeah, but yeah, um, it'll be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. And obviously it seems like the world I feel like I, I feel seen, Shannon, with the, the you know, the, the world finally talking about this whole thing. And I love that. Regardless of where someone falls on on the ten to twenty thousand dollars in debt forgiveness per person, you know that that has recently been announced. Whether someone is for that or against it, it seems like a hundred percent of the people are like, okay, well, but this the debt is a symptom of the problem, not yes, the actual yes, yes. problem. The actual problem is the fact that. A college costs so much that people are incurring yeah, crippling debt that they are unable to dig themselves out of. The whole idea is that you should be able to earn your way out of the debt yeah. that you incur. And, uh, you know, I will I, uh, I'm sure someone will spin this as political, but I really don't mean this as political. No, no. Although it is uh, this whole problem began when or was exacerbated when. The uh, rules were changed that college loans were not dischargeable by bankruptcy. That effectively meant the government was backing every college loan. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. well, if they aren't responsible for like of all the loans you take out, that's the one that is supposed to be the path to earning the money to be able to pay it back. Right. Like yeah. I've taken out stupid loans in the past. I've taken out smart loans in the past. Yeah. And some of the stupid loans are like, well, I know I believe in my heart of hearts that spending this money that no one else thinks I should spend is going to pay off. And sometimes it has and sometimes it hasn't. Sure. But the, the college loan is one of those that should like almost have a guarantee of paying off if you if you apply yourself. And there's lots of people who have applied themselves and it doesn't pay off. And it's because the, the net price is too freaking high. Yeah, it is. Anyway, the schools need to be held accountable. And that's, that's a, what it is. The schools need to be the ones yeah. extending the loans. Yeah. Then guess exactly. what? Yeah. 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 Everything will change. Everything the government should be involved. I think the government should be involved in it. And if the schools can't make it work, there's a reason. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, but absolutely. So, Does everybody need yeah. four years of education? That's a whole other episode. No, that's a whole other. I didn't. So, so <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. And, and so, you know, when you're in this creative thing and you're, you're okay, I'm, I'm in business. A lot of creatives just find themselves in business. Just, it just works that way. After, you know, you start doing things maybe as a side hustle or you're working for someone and then doing things on your own and, and it grows and grows. And as you mentioned in the intro, a couple things. Number one, the first thing to realize as you get into this is that you are in the customer service business. You got to make your customers happy, no matter how small or how big your business is. And I think that, uh, you know, that's real important. And I'd love to talk to talk about that more. Hey, can your business use additional cash flow to help it grow or just get through a temporary rough spot? If so, our friends and our sponsor at business capital providers may be just the help you're looking for. They specialize in funding small and medium-sized businesses quickly without lengthy paperwork or strict collateral requirements. And, and you, you got to check this out. I went to bcproviders.com slash SBS, and it's super easy. And you can go there, too, to find out how you can get funded for as much as $250,000 in as little as 72 hours. You must be in business for one year and produce revenue of at least $25,000. So, OK, that's fine. Quick and easy. They've got this one page application, six months of bank statements, fast results, no collateral required. When banks say no, business capital providers say yes. So again, go to bcproviders.com slash SBS to find out how you can get funded for as much as $250,000 in as little as 72 hours. And our thanks to BC providers, business capital providers for sponsoring this episode. All right. So let's talk about the business of being a creative. I've, I've tried this. Yeah. I, I mean, arguably, I've done this. Like my entire career has been in the creative space. We've published a website. We've published podcasts. We've helped others that are creators 
monetize their podcasts and, yeah. and websites. Yeah, but let me let me back you up. Let me back okay. you up right there. <laughs> I would say <laughs> before we get ahead of ourselves, yeah, yeah. I would say one of the first decisions you probably made to in the, to start a creative business is you decided that you can't just create all the time. That's correct. And, and that is a fundamental, you know, uh, first thing you need to think about is that, you, you know, you want to be self-employed. That's great. And you can go along and be self-employed and be very successful. And if that's your definition of success, that's, that's terrific and more power to you. And I, I, I hope you do great. And, uh, but if you want to build a business, you want to build a company, you want to grow, you want to create wealth, you want to live what we kind of consider the, a charmed life. You have to make the decision that I'm not going to create all the time. You're going to surround yourself with other creatives. You're going to use other, you know, outside uh, things. Uh, I think that's really important to uh, a fundamental part of making that decision. And until you do, it's going to be tough. I, I have this conversation in my own head and sometimes out of my own head often with my friends who are very much creators the artist friends, uh, which includes, you know, musicians and and all other types of art, the, my theater friends, all of that. If you are going to be a, a creator full time, you or someone with whom you are partnered needs to do the not creating part of running the business. Yes. Selling That's things. Right. You know, I I say it all the time when I'm, you know, when I'm looking at uh, the music side of my life, it's like, OK, well. This is all great. How are we going to put asses in seats? Because yeah. that's what you need. You got to put asses in seats and money in the box. Because otherwise, you know, you're you're not the creativity, the creation is not sustainable. The creativity might be sustainable. Like for a lot of people that I know, it very much is. But if you want to afford yourself the ability to keep doing that, you got to put the money in the box and the asses in the seats. And, yeah, and, and, absolutely. you know, like sometimes that actually means asses and seats and other times it me just means having an audience paying attention in different ways, but you get what I'm saying, folks. Yes. Yes. And, you know, part of that making the decision to, that you're not going to be create, you know, be able to create all the time is also understanding and, uh, agreeing to the concept that you can't get stuck in just selling your time. Right. It, it's you have to step away from that paradigm. You, you know, it's a prison is, yes. is, you know, if you're billing hourly, you're 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 in a prison. And at some point and you can start off that way. And I, I would say a lot of lots people of businesses do, do. not. I mean, and that's OK. Yeah. That's okay. Lots of lots of consultants but, do like lots that. Of consultants do. That, that's yeah. and that that was where I realized it more was in my consulting business. It was like, wait, yeah. I need to figure out some way of not. I thought about it as, you know, the monkey on your back, right? I get paid for every yeah. monkey that I carry, but it takes, you know, a fixed amount of time to carry each monkey. And how do I carry yes. 10 monkeys at the same time? Well, I can't if it's just me. So how do I make it so that I can help others carry the monkeys? And now we can all make a little bit more together. And that's where it all started. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's great. And so... There's nothing wrong there's, with carrying whole, monkeys, by the way. I, 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 no yeah, offense no, to good, the monkeys out there. Good folks. money in it. Good, good money in it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, I think that some of the things we're going to talk about, I think creatives kind of kind of miss, but they're fundamental to being successful. We've talked about them here on the show before, and I, and I want to dive back in. But before I do, I, I do want you, I have a question for you, Dave. Okay. I'd like you to expand on this concept that, um, because I think it's really important is that every business, no matter what you're doing, is in the customer service business because that's another fundamental framing of uh, how you build a company that's really important to creatives and all uh, business owners. And I'd, I'd love to hear more. Well, it's it's that you can value your own work and hopefully you do. And it doesn't matter whether, and again, you know, this whole idea of segmenting businesses to being creative businesses and not creative businesses. I actually have a problem with that because I think most businesses are creating something uh, and it requires creativity. But regardless of what you're doing, you, hopefully you value your own work. But that generally 
doesn't provide for an income for the business. And then, of course, not for you. You have to get other people who value your work and you have to take care of those people and make sure that whatever you are providing to them, they are receiving well, that they are getting what they expect out of it and that it is of value to them so that they will hopefully Either if it's a one time thing, they will tell other people about it. Or if it's something where there's recurring revenue, they will keep buying from you going forward. And hopefully it can be both of those things. So you get some recurring revenue and some referral revenue, but they are your customers. And the most important thing is to keep your customers happy. Now, that doesn't mean doing every single thing your customer asks of you. And this is especially true if you're an artist. Right. Where you're, you know, you're creating music or you're creating theater, or you're creating you know, paintings, whatever it is. Create things that serve your artistic vision, but make sure your customers understand what you're doing. And so that might be I need to write a blog post explaining why this song is something I hope they'll listen to or why this painting is something of, of value. You need to serve your customers. And if the customer has a problem not necessarily with your art, but with, say, you know, uh, some logistical issue with the, your payment system that you've chosen to use, which I know is a headache and you don't even want to have that in your life. But if they have a problem with that, don't ignore them. Go out, reach out, engage with them, apologize and help fix the problem if you can. That's what I mean about the customer service, because you can't be in business if you don't have customers. It's, it's yeah, like, I don't, right. I haven't, I wish I could figure that out because customers often, yeah. you know, are like, yeah, it's a headache, it, you know, that's yeah. how it is, but that's how it is. Yeah, that's, right. yeah. that's great. And so, uh, yeah, and, and that it is so true and you, you just, you have to remember this. Um, so you, you made a commitment, you understand you're not going to create all the time. You're in the customer service business. You're not just billing your own hours. Maybe you have other people, you're out there, you're, you're providing uh, contracts based on your work, the quality of your work, your experience, very important. The other thing I would say is you need to be a professional. You need to consider yourself to be a pro. You know, when we had, we were doing, you know, computer repairs, I had everybody walk out front in lab coat because I wanted, I used to tell the technicians, I want people to feel like they're in the doctor's office okay. uh, because it, it allows you to, you know, your image is more professional and the more uh, it's the more professional you look, the more you can charge for your services, for your products, you know, the more professional your website looks, the better everything from your email address. Don't use Gmail for your creative business. Get a website, get your own email with your company or whatever you're calling it. Get a different phone number other than mobile, even if you use Google Voice to, to, to link yep. into it. But make the commitment to be a professional. It, now more than ever, it doesn't cost much money to look really great. It doesn't cost much money to have somebody answer your phone for you when you use a virtual service like we, yeah. we've talked about here. Um, so it's funny, you know, make it, 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 like we have this conversation on GigGab all the time. Paul and I do yeah. that, you know, live music is a visual art. And you need to be aware of how you look on stage because your audience is already Imagine. aware of how you look on yes. stage. Right. So, you know, there's a whole thing in the the, uh, you know, sort of weekend warrior musician world that is 100 percent against anyone wearing cargo shorts. OK, now <laughs> I, 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 and I get it. Right. Because <laughs> if you show up on stage like you didn't care about your attire. If you, you know, if you just finished mowing the lawn and then you went and played a gig, yeah. people are going to know that you look like you just finished mowing the lawn and, and now we're playing a gig. However, I always offer Jimmy Buffett as the alternative here. He's made a very comfortable living wearing cargo shorts yeah. and yeah. he sells. It is aspirational when he wears cargo shorts. Right. And he knows it. He's like, this is not accidental. He has a right. vibe about him and he sells that vibe in his in his persona, in his music, in his marketing, everything, right? Everybody wants to be as laid back as Jimmy Buffett, who owns a freaking island. I guarantee you there are lots of moments where Jimmy Buffett is not laid back, right? But that's yep. the image you get, and it's the right – it's a good image. So cargo shorts work for him. But he is fully aware of how he looks every time he walks on stage. And 
you know, calculated. This is, what's, it's calculated, very calculated. Now, it might have started as an accident. That's fine. You learn a lot of things by mistakes and accidents. Some of them are, you know, good mistakes. Some of them are bad mistakes. I don't know how he got to that that decision point where it became intentional, but it's very much intentional. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, yeah. And and yeah, and yeah. And and to your point, like you, you, the first person who needs to see you as a professional is you. And once yeah. you see yourself exactly. as a professional, then your audience can see or your customers can see you that way too. Yeah. It's great advice. Uh, uh, another thing when you're getting started is I, I highly recommend you read or listen to the E-Myth. Uh, there's a book, it's called E-Myth Revisited. It's been around for a long time, but the, the, one of the biggest things you'll learn in that book is how to not let your business run you how you know how you can be in charge and not get overwhelmed by everything and it's much and i didn't have the luxury of reading it before i started but after getting just buried and buried after you know 4 or 5 years somebody handed me that book and i read it and it was like oh man i'm missing i've been missing this for so long um and i i highly recommend that that you read that for creatives or for every business, it's just always, I, I've got a copy. I'm looking at it right here on my desk. I hand it out to everybody I talk to. Amazing. You, I, I think of all the things we've recommended on the show over the years, we have recommended the E-Myth more than anything else. Yeah. yeah. And, there, and there, it, the one fundamental thing that helped me the most was even when you're starting out, you create a, uh, a chart of, you know, Oh, what's the word I'm looking at? The, the, of every job that needs to be done. An org chart. Uh, in a, an org chart for your business. And and you put your name in every single box because you're doing everything. But as you build and grow your business, you have that org chart in front of you so you can see it. Then you just say, oh, yeah, I can check this. I can I can bring this person in and put them in this role. I need somebody yeah. to do this. It's 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 just fundamentally life-changing. And, th you know, and then we talk about advisors. And I think that... Uh, we always talk about board of a board of advisors and maybe as a creative, this is, you know, maybe a little more formal than you're used to. And we talk about, Hey, get a bank person to help you, an attorney, your accountant, but maybe at the beginning you could just ask um, one of your peers or maybe a mentor to sit on your informal board of sure. advisors. Yeah. You know, look at who's already doing what you want to do and reach out and ask them, and make a connection and start talking to them. Most Hon people want to help. Honestly, I, and I know I can't offer this forever, but reach out to us. Feedback at businessbrain.show. We're happy to talk to you and share our advice and share our experiences with you. I know that we can't do it forever, certainly not for free, but for right now, <laughs> it doesn't hurt. Shoot us an email. Ask glad us if help. we have time. We'd be like right in this very moment. I'd be super glad to help. And I really mean that. And I know, that, you know, you said it too. So feedback yep. at businessbrain.show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Uh, I, I read, you know, I, I, I heard this phrase again recently. And I, I know really what you're about to say. And I, I like, I, yeah, <laughs> this is, this, this is, I, I, I love this. Go ahead. <laughs> we'll see if it's right. We'll see, we'll if, see if I'm right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I heard this phrase and I, and I realized as I look back, because I, I love looking back at things and going, oh, yeah, that worked. That didn't. But in the phrase is you're the average of the five people that you hang out with the most. So as you're getting your business going, think about this. And why not hang out with awesome people that want to help you succeed? And it could just be your friends. But you want to hang out with people that want to lift you up, that you could be comfortable talking about things, comfortable talking about failure and not, you know, telling you how you screwed up or how you're not going to make it. You don't want to listen to naysayers. We did an entire show about, uh, I think it was called uh, Fueling Your Success with the Tears of the Na of Naysayers, right? Yeah. And we'll put a link in the show notes. And it's, I can tell you, from being able to look back and having some success with a number of different businesses, it's awesome to talk with somebody who was just convinced you were never going to make it. And uh, it's powerful and it is fuel for your, for your success. So hang around people, whether it's peers, people that are already doing what you want to do, but align yourself with a group of people that can offer you support that you really need. Yeah. Now, Ryan, Ryan Stuman, who's the hardcore closer, we interviewed him a number of years ago when his book came out. 
uh, he has this phrase. He says, you need to fight the force of average. And I love that. Right. And it's 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 exactly this. And and as he digs into it, he says almost the same thing you're saying here is, is that, you know, that you got to look at who you hang with and you need to choose to not let the people that you hang around with bring you down at, at like when I started it, 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 to tie this into the whole creative thing. When I started playing the drums, of course, I I I was self-conscious conscious and all that stuff. And I didn't have much confidence in my playing and I didn't know much and any of those things. And so I always avoided playing with people that were better than me. That went away very quickly when I found myself on yeah. a gig with people who were better than me. You know, because it's bound to happen, when, especially when you sure. don't know a whole lot. You know, it's kind of how it works. And immediately I was like, wait. This is the best thing I can do is I always I strive to be I don't always succeed at this and it's OK. Like I'm happy to to m mentor other people. And there's always something to learn, even from especially from the, the you know, the beginners. But I always like to be the person on stage or in the rehearsal room that is the least experienced because that means I get to learn the most that day. Now that might not be true. They might learn more from me than I learned from them. Right. You know, but playing with people that are above you and hanging out with people who are above you will make you naturally rise up to their level. And if you're hanging out with people who are below you, the same thing happens. You know, there's a normalization yeah. that occurs and so you got to be really aware of how you're choosing to spend your time. And I know most people don't like to shine lights back on themselves, but ask yourself why. If you are hanging out with people that are, you know, if you're the most successful one of your, you know, your peer group or you are the, you know, the best player or the best artist in, in your community, ask yourself why you continue to be a part of that community and really honestly answer that question and and then decide what to do the next day. And that's 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 all I'm going to say about that, because you might have a very good reason for being with the people that you're with. And and that's OK. I don't want to judge that, but I want to make sure it's intentional and and that you're aware of the reasons that you're doing it. That's all. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, uh, I think that. You know, one thing to remember too, and another thing we talked about on the show a lot is this, this concept of a thousand true fans. If you can use that, especially in the beginning and really get, and, and we'll put a link in the show notes to go learn more about this, this concept of being a creative, being able to make a living. Uh, so, it, and the way I look at it is it would allow you to kind of have a foundation to be like, okay, great. I've got this support in, I, I built this, this part of, you know, my uh, business. Now, because I have these thousand true fans or whatever number works for you, you can then grow your company and, and truly build a business. Yeah. Um, take a look at that. I, I have a whole kind of laundry list of tools that I think creative uh, businesses need. And rather than go over on the show, let, well, you want to, you want to just notes. do a, we will put them in the show notes, but will you just yeah. take a minute and, and read through each of them kind of lightning round this, just sure. read down yeah, the list. I'll tell you if what you I, would. Yeah. I, I think what you need, it, it, it's kind of similar for all businesses, but especially creatives, you, you need a, a legal service like legal zoom, a rocket lawyer to help you get set up, get a employee identification number, all that stuff. You need Slack or teams to you, you collaborate with people. You need to accept payments with Stripe, Square, or PayPal, some online service. It's much easier than a traditional bank. It's, you know, I hate banks. Um, <laughs> I love FileMaker. It changed my life, and it, I use it oh. every single day. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm you with you there. Too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need some project management software, something like Asana or some other service online that you like to help keep things, you know, straightforward. Fiverr and Upwork to manage and hire contractors or, you know, sp for specific projects. I recently have used, have I recently used Fiverr again. It, it, I, for whatever reason, it had been a while and I don't know, I had a bad taste in my mouth about the quality of Fiverr work. I incorrectly folks. I like, I, I just, just it, yeah, it was, I had a prejudice against it for whatever reason. Depends on who you hire. They just yeah. redid our logo for us when we did, when we shifted over to business brain. Yeah, good, good that's right. I, I needed, yeah. and I knew that. And for one of my other businesses, I needed to take a logo that we'd been using and turn it into a vectorized logo so that mm. I could, uh, you know, use it on t-shirts without it looking all jaggy and crappy. Yeah. And 
I, I mean, I had, uh, I want to say five iterations of this thing done. And with a tip that I add a healthy tip that I added at the end, I paid $21 for ah, that's all awesome. of this. Yeah. I, I mean, like, yeah, yeah there's good My stuff. Version. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, last few things. You need some great accounting software because you've got to track your stuff, not just to be uh, legal, but to take advantage of all the write-offs and additional benefits you get as a business owner. Yeah. It's part of the charmed life concept. There's a lot more than just making money uh, to, to, you know, uh, to building wealth and living that charmed life. You need Hootsuite or a similar software to manage your social media. And then I think you need uh, online contracts and documents, either HelloSign or DocuSign, so you can have your clients go up there and pay. So overall, my message here is comes back to where I started. You need to commit to being a business owner, not just a creative person. If you want to grow that business and as Dave said, we're here to help. We'd love to talk with you. Uh, now's a great time if you want to reach out and uh, feedback at businessbrain.show. I'm still making that conversion. Um, <laughs> and uh, and we love talking about this stuff. We love sharing. We've, we've been doing it for 25 plus years, so it's great to give back. And remember, you want to surround yourself with the five people that can really help you the most. It's so true. A couple I, of them may be sitting right here. I know you had this advice in your list and skipped it in the interest of time, but I, I will share one thing that I have seen work to help convert a lot of my creator only friends and colleagues into being in the business of a creator and that is by creating your own LLC I know it's just a formality yes. but for a lot of folks that is the thing that makes it real and and for whatever reason sort of tips the scales on that conversion so uh, you know you can you can form an LLC very very easily online uh, you know it'll cost you a couple hundred bucks at most and and you're good to go so i would i would i would look at that too yeah yeah absolutely good stuff and legal zoom or rocket lawyer can help yeah. you form that LLC absolutely It'll protect your assets as you grow your business very very important so yeah. thanks for that tip absolutely. dave yeah no of course i just didn't want to skip that cuz because i've seen it help so many people as just that little key of moving it across. So yeah. thanks for hanging out with us. As Shannon said, we are here at feedback at businessbrain.show. And uh, really reach out if you want something. Keep them in that charmed life. See you next time. Bye.